Anika Hakdalov, a third year advised by Avram and Arya, and she'll be telling us about community. And it's, uh, it's for speaking skills. Thanks, Colin. Um, my talk is about uh, kidney exchange and incentives, and the title is Opting in for an Individually Rational Kidney Exchange. Uh, this is a, based on a collaboration with Avram Blum, uh, Yanis Karagianis, Ariel Porcaccia, Eviatar Porcaccia, and Rohit Vaish. Uh, this is also part of my speaking skills um, talk, so the content here is intended not necessarily for a technical audience. Um, kidney exchange, uh, kidney transplant um, is usually the best and most permanent uh, solution for someone who has a kidney disease, a chronic kidney disease. Uh, kidneys are somewhat of an unusual uh, organs though because most people have two kidneys and we only need one of them to have a perfectly normal life. So kidneys can be uh, harvested from uh, living donors. But unfortunately, even for those uh, patients that are fortunate enough to have a willing donor, uh, the direct transplantation is not always possible. This is usually due to a bunch of medical conditions and medical incompatibilities. Because of that, uh, in today in the US, most of the kidney transplants are done uh, from a deceased donor. And we have about 100,000 people currently waiting to receive a kidney on a deceased donor uh, list. Uh, you can think of this as, on average, about uh, 3,000 people are added to this wait list, which means that there is a huge gap between the demand and supply for kidneys. And because of that, the median wait time for receiving a kidney is quite long, and unfortunately, many patients pass away before they can actually receive a kidney. All of these uh, problems point us to uh, kind of understanding that we need to utilize those kidneys from live and willing donors that were incompatible. And how can we do that? This is exactly where kidney exchange comes in. In its simplest form, uh, it's an exchange between two pairs of donor and patient, where we have two, uh, a donor and a patient where they are incompatible with each other, and another donor and a patient. So maybe we have two brothers here and a wife and a husband here. They are incompatible with each other, but they can swap kidneys. So the first donor can donate a kidney to the second patient, and the second donor can donate to the first patient. So in this way, by this exchange, both of the patients receive a compatible kidney. So this is the simplest form of kidney exchange. Uh, in practice, uh, we can, so this is uh, done through a two cycles, but in practice you can also think of this as having a larger, like kidneys uh, being exchanged through a larger cycle. Um, for practical reasons, um, our, the current kidney exchange methods only look for two or three cycle exchanges and not more than that. We can represent a kidney exchange a graph or the donors and patients that are participating in kidney exchange by this something we call a compatibility graph. Um, and know that a compatibility graph represents both a patient and a donor that came in the system together, so they are originally incompatible with each other. And uh, there is an edge between a donor to a, a patient of another node if that donor can, uh, can uh, donate his kidney to that patient. Kidney exchange can also happen uh, through a chain that starts by an altruistic donor. So an altruistic donor basically is a, a, a donor that entered the system without being paired with a patient. Um, and these chains start by a donor, but they can also continue hopping over from a patient to a donor, donor to a patient. Uh, technically speaking, these can be, again, arbitrarily long, but for practical reasons, we look at them when there are uh, short uh, chains, maybe up to three or four length four. <coughs> for the rest of the talk, uh, I will use the nodes that are not necessarily divided to two colors, so each node still represents a donor and a patient but they're kind of pushed in together in one node. Kidney exchange is, um, one of the cool things about kidney exchange is that it's a collaboration between a lot of different disciplines and fields. Um, it's uh, specifically starting from medical field and economics and also computer science um, and also people in like health and policy. So the people who pioneered this work from the economic side are Alvin Roth, Taifun Sonmez, and M. Oktu Unver. Uh, these are economists that uh, kind of came up with the concept of how can we have these exchanges. 
And more on the computer science and computation side, we have Thomas Sandholm from CMU uh, that uh, looks at more like the computation and algorithms that can find these uh, kidney exchanges efficiently and easily. Uh, we also have um, Alvin and Thomas uh, have been working uh, in collaboration with uh, UNIS, United Network for Organ Sharing, that runs these bi-weekly match matches and finds kidney exchange on like real graphs represented by real donors and patients. And a lot of the kidney uh, transplants that are happening in the U.S. right now, a good portion of them are happening through UNIS. Um, the main goal of having a kidney exchange mechanism is then to be able to serve as many patients as possible, to be able to, uh, to arrange for kidney transplants for as many patients as possible. So what we want to do is that we want to find these disjoint sets of short cycles or short chains that serve the most number of nodes. So in this case, by kind of going through the cycle that is uh, green, we can arrange for three matches. And that's the best we can do. The best we can do, we are going to call it up or the optimal assignment. And it's really the number of matches that are going to be matched on their op that's, that we are interested in. Um, in the past couple years, hospitals have become the main agents and main, main players in a kidney exchange game. Uh, they are now the main agents to enroll their patients for kidney exchange services. And uh, because of that, one of the challenges that a mechanism faces now is how to elicit participation from these hospitals so that they would enroll their patients in the system. Um, you can think of this as if we have now uh, an additional structure over the graph we had, so a bunch of our uh, nodes belong to one hospital and some of them belong to another hospital. These hospitals have selfish goal of increasing the most number of matches they can receive themselves rather than what's happening at the global level. So even though as we showed, the, the best matching would be to go through this cycle of length three and achieve a, a three matches, the red hospital here uh, would much rather go by himself and arrange for a different matching that matches his, both of his nodes. So if we were going to only use opt, uh, the red hospital wouldn't want to participate in this matching. So it's important to come up with solutions that have the, that have the property w that what the hospital can gain by himself before participation is less than what he can gain at the global level. So the subscript of H is basically telling you what the share of that hospital is from uh, the global or the internal matching. So this is called individual rationality or what I would term IR a lot in this talk. And it's a very important uh, properties of, a property of a mechanism if we want to elicit participation. So that's our goal is to ki kind of come up with this individual rational uh, mechanisms. There is a related um, property of a mechanism that's not necessarily our goal here, but it's quite common and we talk about it a lot, so it's important to go over it. Uh, this is about the hospitals misrepresenting themselves even when they do participate. So they participate, but not necessarily fully. So in this graph, um, let's, the, red, the red nodes and the yellow nodes are for different hospitals. What we can do, we can kind of go through a matching that uh, matches the like just any consecutive two. And under this matching, the red hospital is getting only three matches. What the red hospital can do is uh, to lie a little bit. What do we mean? He's going to hide two of his nodes. And now the kidney exchange mechanism to increase the number of its matches is going to use these matchings. So we see that the red hospital, by hiding part of his matching, um, managed to achieve a better matching inside. So this is what's called like a, a mechanism that uh, would tell that would help the hospitals to just reveal their true type and not re, uh, not hide any of their patients. It's called a strategy proof mechanism. This is uh, kind of a difficult goal to achieve. In fact, if you want to have a mechanism that is strategy proof, as in the hospitals would not lie to you, you cannot guarantee more than half of up. If you, can, if you want to guarantee more than half of opt, you cannot be strategy proof. So this is not, as I said, this is not the main goal of our setting, but we kind of go around it. What we want to do as the main goal of our mechanism, however, is to do this kind of an opt-in, opt-out mechanism. 
So we tell the hospitals that they have two options. They can either opt in and reveal all of their patients fully, or they can opt out and be by their own. And what we want is to have a mechanism where it is individually rational or all the hospitals would gain by opting in. And on top of that, this mechanism can achieve a number of matches that's almost as good as opt itself. Um, Note that we kind of go around the strategy proof um, requirement by not allowing the hospitals to be very expressive. So the hospitals cannot now express their type by revealing patients one by one. They have to either reveal all of their patients or none of them. So this is kind of going around the strategy proof requirement. Kind of in a more abstract model and more abstract uh, type of uh, result that we are looking for is that if we have any compatibility graph, so it could be worst case compatibility graph, where the number of nodes is n, that's the number of donors, patients, pairs in the system, and the number of hospitals is k, we assume that it's much smaller than the number of nodes so that each hospital can have a large number of patients. And each node is assigned at random to one of the hospitals. So in this case, you can think of it as we start with a compatibility graph, and then for each node at random, we flip a coin and decide where does that patient and donor belong to. This kind of, um, it makes sense if you think about it in the sense that um, in, your, in, in our kidney exchange mechanism, patients and donors go and register at a hospital without thinking about their compatibility necessarily. Usually they go to a hospital because it's in their geographic location or it's the hospital that they have been working with for years. So this is kind of like uh, uncorrelated with what their actual type and uh, like blood type or tissue type is. And uh, in their geographic location somewhat correlated with their, uh, isn't their geographic location somewhat correlated with their blood type? You know, some more homogeneous. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I haven't done a study to know whether it's related or not, but it seems more like at least in today's U.S., you don't necessarily choose where to live based on your like blood type. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe it's not completely homogeneous, but it's kind of roughly there, I would say. Um, Another thing is that we're assuming that all of these hospitals are kind of, they have the same power, so when, or the same approximate size, as in for each point, with probability one over K, it goes to hospital number one, one over K hospital number two. So they are pretty much symmetric in their power. Um, and what we are looking for in exchanges is just chains or cycles that are short, usually length three, uh, up to length three, so either length two or length three. And the type of result that we are going to get and we are hoping for is that we can have a mechanism that's individually rational, so which is the one that the hospitals would prefer to participate in. And with high probability, this mechanism <coughs> is going to have a matching size that is smaller than OCT, but at most is like big O of uh, square root of OCT. So when OCT is large, this is kind of a small uh, gap between what the mechanism can achieve and what OPT can achieve, while the mechanism is still eliciting participation from the hospitals. Um, but you can also show that this is the best you can hope for, as in any other mechanism that's individually rational and elicits participation <coughs> cannot have a better guarantee of, uh, approximation guarantee of what it can achieve in terms of uh, OPT. So if you want to kind of think of uh, the mechanism as a mechanism that's individually rational and opt, which is opt IR, so you're optimal but you're still constrained to being individually irrational, we want the gap between opt IR and opt to be kind of small. And for our case, we show that it's at most some square root of opt. Uh, is there any question about the model or the res like what we are hoping to get at this point? Yes. What is the high probability of Good, so when I was talking about the model, we said that each node is uh, assigned to a hospital at random. So this high probability is the high probability over the assignment of patients to hospitals, or so patient the donor uh, The mechanism can be deterministic, yeah. You can look, it, it can look at the, uh, the compatibility graph and uh, be blind, for example, to anything else. And, but what happens is that the, what it can get in terms of um, 
opt would be probabilistic. I will explain it a little bit more once I talk about the mechanism. I think that might become more clear. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, do the hospitals decide to opt in or opt out after the uh, donor patients are assigned to the hospitals or before? Yeah, they can opt out after. So what you want is that after they see the assignment that they're going to get through the mechanism, they're still happy with that assignment and they're not going to uh, veto it in some sense and leave the mechanism. OK. Um, so let's just um, kind of look at this individual rationality and matching side, uh, size um, by looking at very simple case when we are only looking at two cycles. So the exchange can happen only in two cycles. It happens that if you're constraining yourself to only two cycles, you can get a very strong guarantee that no matter what, there is a mechanism that's optimal and it is individually rational. So you don't have to sacrifice anything by constraining yourself to individual rational mechanisms. You can think of this as a mechanism that starts from internal matches of each hospital, so what each hospital can achieve by themselves, and then would expand this matching through augmenting paths. What an augmenting path is, it's just a path whose edges kind of alternate in the matching and outside of a matching, and you can show that using augmenting paths, like if you expand the matching through an augmenting path, you can always end up at a matching that's optimal. So in this case, for example, um, our matching will start with the internal matching, which is the only internal matching we can get is the red matching. But then we are going to increase it by changing, by using this alternative uh, augmenting path and increasing the matching size. And then again, we can repeat the same thing by using a different matching and increasing the size. And this is opt. Uh, a nice property about these augmenting paths is that they never, um, they, they always just grow the set of nodes that's covered by the, by the matching. They never take out a, a node outside uh, and throw it out of the matching. So if you start from a mechanism that's individually rational, the matching that you end up with is still individually rational after applying these <coughs> steps. Um, so in this sense, what we wanted to achieve in opt and what opt IR could achieve are the same. You don't have to sacrifice anything. So this is really cool, but it's only for two ex like the two cycle exchanges. And the example I showed you at the beginning still stands here. Especially in this instance, there is no opt that is individually rational. If you want to be individually rational, you have to sacrifice the number of matches. So the question really is, does this happen a lot or not? To Kind of before moving and thinking about the challenge, let's talk about when this is not a problem. This is not a problem if what the hospitals can achieve internally is almost as good as you can hope for at a global level anyway. So if there is nothing to be gained or there is very little bit to be gained from moving between hospitals not collaborating and hospitals collaborating, we already have uh, our kind of approximation guarantee. Because our opt IR is always going to lie between what you can achieve internally and what you can achieve globally. So if you can achieve good enough outcome you know, internally, then that's OK. You can just let the hospitals get their matches internally. So this is really a problem when there is this large gap between what you can do internally and what you can do at a global level. That's, that's when you really want to be able to <coughs> Uh, use the fact that hospital collaborating is going to give you a much larger and much better matching. So what happens when you have this big gap between what you can achieve internally and what you can achieve externally? Um, we can think about how much a hospital gains under this system. So in expectation, uh, we said that the hospitals are all kind of the same because it's pretty much everything is symmetric. The hospitals have the same power, the same size. Each node is, goes to hospitals with an equal probability. So whatever hospitals can get on their opt is just one kth of what opt is. So that would be their expected share. And they can also get some expect, like equal expected share again because it's all symmetric. Uh, internally. What happens is that if at the beginning I had a large gap between internal and opt, 
I still have a large gap for every hospital because all the hospitals are symmetric. So this, this gap is maybe one kit of the gap that you originally start with. So if you have a big gap, you still have a big gap on per hospital basis. But this is an expectation. What happens in the realization? So the realization of what hospitals can gain is a random variable, um, both under opt and both and internally, because it depends on their assignment of nodes to hospitals. And you can think of this random variable, for example, under internal, has an expectation that we are defining as ex expectation of internal. But the random variable itself can be anywhere. It could be bigger than the expectation, it could be uh, smaller than the expectation. We don't, right now, we haven't talked about it at all. It's just a random variable. <coughs> Same thing happens for opt. Where the expectation of what you gain under opt is one k of the opt, but the realization of it is, again, some random variable. So the problematic part really is um, actually Maybe let's, let's look at these random variables a little bit more in detail, what these represent. For example, for in the internal case, whatever you can get internally, what is it? It's just a maximum matching that you can achieve on the internal level. So it's just a function of n variables where each variable says whether or not a node belongs to that hospital. It's, uh, yeah, whether or not a node belongs to an hospital. Um, this is not an explicit function, it's just a combinatorial, you know, it's a matching, but it's a function of these n variables. For opt, it's slightly simpler. It's still a function of these n variables, but opt is just one matching. And how much of that matching you can achieve is really the sum of the, the number of nodes that you own that happen to belong to that matching. So that would be really the sum of these variables that happen to be in opt. So these two variables are the random variables that show how much you are getting internally and how much you can get uh, at the global level. But um, the problematic part is... <coughs> so I'm confused. So is, isn't it isn't your graph fix? Yes. Is the graph fix? Yes. So then why is opt changing? Opt is not changing, but what you can... It's, so this is what you can get as part of opt. Because, uh, so, so that's kind of the expectation. What you can get depends on which nodes of the opt you actually own. Uh, is, is this clear? Okay. Is that, sorry, yeah. is that opt A supposed to uh, depend on the hospital A? Yeah, so that's so like the, your share of H. Okay, sure, but then the right hand side is being dependent on A. Yeah, so this X1 to Xn, the way I'm defining it, is that it's per hospital. So X1 is equal to 1 is if the first node was owned by hospital H. This is just a simplification of that. OK. So let's look at the problematic part. When, is a ho when does a hospital want to sort of exit the mechanism and is not happy? Is when on this line, the, the green point, which is what he can get internally, is bigger than the blue point, which is what he can get externally <coughs> at the global level. So let's, let's look at these random variables again. So the problematic part is kind of here, right? When these are crossing over each other. So this is very much related to how well the random variable is concentrated around its own expectation. So if these random variables are pretty concentrated, they don't cross over much. So the probability that they might cross over or a hospital might not be happy by just receiving his share of opt is pretty small. But when they're not concentrated and they're kind of all over the place, this area that uh, they cross over is large. So with more considerable probability, a hospital might not be happy with his share of opt. So what we want to show is that, or what we kind of intuitively saw is that if the number of matchings that the hospital can gain, both under his global share and his internal share, are both concentrated around their expectations, so both blue and green are concentrated, then kind of naturally, with high probability, that opt is going to be individually rational. Is this kind of, yeah? Not just close to IR, high probability? No, so opt is, uh, it's not that it's close to IR, but it is, it's definitely IR with high probability. 
So when it's not IR, we can, we can do something else. Uh, I will come back to the mechanism. Basically, uh, you can, maybe you can, what you can do is that you will try, if opt is not IR, you will forget about opt and give the, indiv the hospitals individually what they could have achieved on their own. So that would be always an IR mechanism, but its approximation guarantee would be kind of probabilistic. <coughs> So let's talk about this concentration. Why should these variables be concentrated? The easy case is what you can get as part of your share of opt. Because we said that it, you can already write it as some of these random variables. And we all know that some of random variables that are independently drawn at random, uh, they're pretty concentrated. You can show that by turn off bounds, hofting bounds. You can just like, think of it as law of large numbers. If you have the sum of a bunch of variables that are random, the sum itself is pretty concentrated around what it should be. <coughs> um, what about what you can get internally? So that's a little bit more complicated because we said it's represented by matching. Uh, that matching is, is not necessarily as easy sum. Uh, but still, there are a bunch of things about this <coughs> random variable that can help us show that it's concentrated. Um, for example, each variable has a very small influence on what the global value of that function is. For example, if I have, like I add a node or I take a node out of the, of the set of nodes that belong to a hospital, the, the, what the hospital can do is to forget about just one of the small cycles, so a cycle of three. So at most, each, uh, ver each, each node ha can change the value of the function by three. Or you can think of it as this way. So this is originally my matching, but now I can say that, oh, one of the nodes actually doesn't belong to the hospital anymore. Just forget about that. You might be able to do much better, but this is the worst that you can do and still doesn't change the, the value of the function much. So that just says that each variable has very small influence. But also the number of variables that have any influence is pretty small. Why? Um, that's because if you, if you have a variable that has any influence, which means that having it as part of a matching or not having it as part of a matching actually matters, that node better be part of your opt. Otherwise, you could have found another opt without using that node. So the number of variables that actually matter is bounded by opt itself. So together, at an intuitive level, uh, these functions behave well and they're concentrated because if you want to change their value a lot, you have to change the value of a lot of random variables. These random variables, which are x1 to xn, are independent of each other. So changing all of them in a random way is not a very likely thing to do. So at an intuitive level, uh, both of these variables are concentrated. You can show that um, well, for the, for the opt, we said that it's actually quite easy with turn off bound, but you can also show that in, internally, um, if you're concentrated with high probability around your expectation, with just something that's square root of opt. And that ln of 1 over delta is just if you want to be within, with probability delta to be outside of the concentration range, that's, that's what's happening there. Um, why, are the, um, why is it independent? Because isn't a hospital able to change a bunch of nodes all at once? So then all the nodes that belong to one hospital are related to each other? So the way, um, so if we, we go back to the model, what we said was that we have this compatibility graph. And uh, a random variable now is representing whether or not one node belongs to that hospital. So we are, what you're saying is that uh, the fact that nodes belong to different hospitals is something that's drawn at random independently of each other. So if I go to UPMC, you might not go to UPMC. You can, you can independently of me, you might go to some other hospital. Sure, but the hospital's decision to participate or not participate is made after they see who has already joined. That is and true. And they're the ones that influence whether a node is revealed or not revealed. That, uh, oh, uh, so... Just, just to go back, so we are not, yeah, yeah, we are not doing the one by one reveal mechanism. Right. We are doing either you opt in and you reveal everything, right, or you right, opt right. out and you forget about everything. Yeah. So, uh, but, but in general, um, what you're saying is that your fraction of the total thing that you can get, both internally and externally, is just a function of these variables, and these variables are independent. Um, 
Good. So what this means is that if we originally had a large gap, which was some square root of t, square root of opt, uh, with high probability, what you are getting is between you know for the for the green points, which is what you can get internally, and blue points, what you can get externally, is within the brackets. So they don't cross over, and with high probability, opt is IR because of that. So if opt or this is the first part of our theorem. So if there is a large gap, opt is with high probability individual rational. What if there is no large gap? Then you would just return the individual, individual um, matchings as we discussed earlier. So this is in some sense, uh, you can think of this mechanism as being, I guess, uh, random in some sense because you first try opt and if opt is not individually rational, you kind of fall back on the internal. But opt itself is a deterministic process when you look. Is there any question about this, this part of the theorem? So which um, concentration of inequality did you use for the top to get the optimum? So it's uh, kind of multiple ones <laughs> together, but um, so you can think of it, um, either you, you, you can get that kind of concentration maybe in different ways. One way you can get it is by kind of uh, doing, um, using, uh, this is kind of difficult to explain, but uh, you're using these Martingale influences uh, with uh, like log Sobolev kind of um, uh, concentration. Another way you can do this is by showing a telegram inequality for these functions. Um, okay. I think another way to do it is by using self-bounding functions, but they are kind of like all outside of the context of this talk. Um, yeah, but by, by different techniques you can get uh, that top one. Um, how strongly does the result depend on the independence of the assignment of the X's to the hospitals? So like if there's some dependence, like if there are some hospitals that like so, get richer process by assignment of like hospitals or something like this, um, this will fall apart? Um, so it depends on the, all of these martingale inequalities, like you can get some uh, kind of like a smooth transitions if there's a little bit of dependence. Uh, especially if they are like uh, correlated but in a kind of a negative way, you can get stronger results. So mm -hmm. it kind of depends. Um, but sort of the results that you can get from probability theory kind of just follows through here as well. <coughs> Either in terms of having a little bit of dependence or having better than independence kind of result. Okay. Um, I want to briefly talk about why this is kind of the best thing you can hope for. And before doing that, what we want to kind of do is to um, extend this, this bad problem to uh, a graph with n nodes and also to something that holds on a, on a probabilistic um, uh, kind of regime because this was kind of a worst case assignment of hospitals, nodes to hospitals as well. But before doing that, let's just think about this like a very simple probability uh, phenomenon, which is if you are, if you have a bunch of options, for example, you have a bunch of baskets and you're throwing balls at random in these uh, baskets, all with equal probability, what happens is that with good probability, one of them is going to be, have, to have more balls than the other ones, and the gap between them is about square root of the number of balls that you threw. So this is kind of just like the understanding how variance of random variables work. But you can use this to kind of generalize the idea of the bad example. What we do is that we are going to have many copies of this bad example, but also we are going to have a lot more edges, which is um, between any two layer, you're adding the edges. So this is like kind of fully connected between any two layers. So if I look at any four points in different layers, together the four points will form one of those bad examples. <coughs> What does opt do in this case? So this is still opt is going to take all of these three cycles and achieve a three n over four uh, size of matching. So that's what opt does. But what about each individual hospital? So what we said was that, just think of this as throwing balls in four different baskets. Each basket with good probability individually can have more number of balls than it should have had. So in particularly in this case, this row, row number two, can have more number of nodes in it for a hospital, and that gap is square root of n. <coughs> but what happens then? So we have this hospital, so all of them, you can think of them as being kind of smaller. This hospital has 
a red node or square root n many red nodes in the second layer that are being matched in just three cycles with yellow nodes. So kind of like that. And the hosp oh sorry, yes. Sorry, I'm lost. What are red and yellow nodes? Um, so the yellow nodes right now, just think about them as uh, you haven't assigned any, hosp any nodes to hospitals. The red point this is just an example of one bad situation that's happening, which is a hospital has an re extra red node in the second layer that is, going, is being matched with nodes of a different hospital now. So if you have two hospitals, just you know, the, the red hospital versus the yellow hospital, that's in this case. Um, but this is kind of bad for the red node. Why? Because the red node, first of all, note that none of these top nodes are, being, being, are participating in the opt. So they're all available. And there, there, there's definitely enough red nodes in the first layer that if the red hospital wants, he can deviate and he can do these matchings instead. So this matching, for example, is much better for the, for the red hospital than what he's getting overall uh, in the yellow cycle. Is that more clear? And the reason you can do this is that in this specific example, because they're all connected at every layer, um, what the hospital can achieve is not, it's not that important which nodes you have in each layer, but rather how many nodes you have in each layer. So you have, if you have an excess of nodes in, the, in layer two, it's better for you to deviate and match the excess with whatever you can on top while matching the rest of your nodes through three cycles that you could have matched before anyway. So this shows that um, if, in fact, you want to be an IR mechanism, you definitely have to take at least square root n of these two cycles on the top rather than the three cycles, which means that you're going to have a big gap from up. So you're, you're going to be away from opt, but that square root of n number of, that you're kind of losing from not using cycles of length three. So this shows that no individual irrational mechanism can have a better gap, or, or that this gap in, men, in some instances is square root of opt, and our upper bound showed that it will never be more than square root of opt. So this is in some sense the best mechanism that you can have. Um, are there any questions at this point? Okay, so I want to uh, kind of conclude this talk by some discussion points and um, what we can kind of understand from this setting. There are, uh, the model that we used was quite abstract. Uh, we talked about nodes and hospitals being just some set of nodes, but um, there's a lot more uh, subtleties involved in real matching. For example, uh, matching can have different qualities. So it's not just the number of patients that you can match, but a match between a donor and patient could be much better due to you know, compatibility issues or health conditions than some other match. So we can easily extend our mechanism and our framework to this setting where um, rather than hospitals receiving the same number of matches that they could have received internally, they're now receiving a matching that in terms of total quality is better than what, you could have, what they could have achieved internally. So this is a very natural extension that we can take care of. There are some other extensions. For example, we assume that hospitals have approximately the same size, or I said that each node goes to one hospital with probability one over K. And that was important for us because we use that to show that the hospitals have same power and they're symmetric in some sense. Um, so that's an important issue, and we can relax this to some degree, because that symmetry was basically telling us that if you have gap overall, you have gap for each hospital. Um, we can relax this a little bit, um, but not quite a lot yet. So this is for future work, that to be able to relax this and extend this framework to hospitals of very different sizes, so with probabil different probabilities, a node goes to a hospital. There are some also limitations, uh, more direct limitations of this work. One is long chains or long cycles. Um, if we want to handle long chains or long uh, cycles, you can show that in fact no IR mechanism can achieve more than a fraction of opt. 
So this is a much worse type of guarantee that we could have achieved today because we had just a square root opt kind of gap rather than losing half of opt. But this is in practice uh, because using long chains, there is a lot of uh, problems with it. For example, long chains can fail with higher probability. In Unis Matrons, uh, we, look at long, uh, we don't look at long chains. We only look at chains up to length three or four. So in practice, this is hopefully fine. There's also, what if we have too few patients per hospital? Because we kind of relied on having a random variable and having enough patients per, uh, per hospital. So this, again, you can show that if you don't have enough patients, again, you have to lose a constant fraction of your uh, matching if you want to be uh, individually rational. But also in practice, this, I think, might be fine because you can think of this as a long-term mechanism. It's not just a one match run or one year. Maybe it's like 10-year period, and you will have enough patients per hospitals if you think of it, of it that way. OK. So just to conclude, in summary, what we showed today was that we wanted to design a kidney exchange mechanism that elicited participation from uh, hospitals. And what we did was that we introduced this opt-in or opt-out mechanism where hospitals opted in and revealed all of their patients or they opted out and they were on their own. And we showed that it's always to the benefit of the hospital to opt in. So that was the individual rationality. And also we could find a matching that was very large. It was pretty good compared to what we could have done globally with opt. We also showed that this was in some sense the best possible we could have done with an IR mechanism because any individually rational mechanism uh, will have kind of like, at most, this is the best approximation guarantee you can get from it. With that, I thank you. Um, I don't know the numbers, but there aren't, so for example, I think it, and at least in the kidney exchange network, there are about like 140 hospitals, and I, I think most of them don't, like you can say that most of them have a lot of patients, at least at this point in time, per year. small. It's not that there are small hospitals, it's just that the, the yeah. So that's why I, I think you need to kind of look at it in the long term. But also, just the fact that the number of people that are uh, participating in kidney exchange is much lower than the number of people that are in the wait list. For example, you have 100,000 uh, people on the wait list, but you only have a couple thousand people participating in a kidney exchange. So if everyone on the wait list was participating through kidney exchange, you would have more patients per hospitals. Yes? In, in practice, there seems to be a little more Sorry. Could you because Sorry. Uh, I can't hear you. In practice, yeah. there seems to be a little more flexibility because uh, because of the dynamic nature of the exchange, uh, the hospitals have to decide to opt in or opt out uh, at an interim stage where they know their current patients but not the future patients. So do you think uh, that can be used to avoid some of the limitations? So I think that would be kind of like the policy implementation point of view that, you know, um, for example, we are saying that even when hospitals opt in, they have to reveal all of their information. So if you want to have that system, it has to be a system that says you click a button and I see your you know, database kind of thing. And if you uh, implement, uh, I think those policies, those, those are usually long-term policies. So it won't be that the hospital can participate today and tomorrow would leave. It would be kind of long-term kind of commitment. Yes? What about if it was the patient that controls these decisions? Is it, is it always um, so there are some, I mean, you can get into a very long discussion um, that sometimes you might not get as good of a match by participating in an exchange rather than waiting for a donor disease list. That uh, seems to be some people's um, concern, and that's why we sort of talked about the quality of matching at the end as an extension. But um, in general, I think you can, so one, what something that you can do is that you can always participate in an exchange and also be part of the waiting mm -hmm. list, which is what everyone does. Uh, but there is, on the theoretical level, there's more challenges there because then you have to talk about different mechanisms working at the same time. Yes. 
So uh, you assume a compatibility graph exists, and then you randomly assign the nodes to different processes. Yeah. So, uh, but then when I actually imagine the generation process, I would imagine that the nodes have already been assigned to a hospital, and the compatibility graph is random. <coughs> okay. So have you thought about this? So there's actually some work before our work that was the more popular model of looking at it, uh, kind of like the model, random graph model. Um, but the results there is not necessarily better actually. There, even, even if you want to achieve individual rationality or like strategy proofness in that setting, you need to have these more assumptions about what the hospitals know about other hospitals or what you can kind of give them in long term to, particip to elicit their participation. So this seems to us, it seems more like a natural model because the compatibility could be anything rather than being generated from like some random graph model. But then the, the individuals are kind of randomly distributed between hospitals. Yeah. So all the nodes in your graph are uh, patient and the uh, donor. donor pair, right? Yeah. Well, I remember in some of your graph you said like, there is also some only like yeah. donor. So yeah, so you can ra for do you can have these special nodes that are just donor nodes rather than donor patient nodes. Um, so on even theoretically, those nodes, uh, your results are still yes, okay. yes, yes. Because our results relied on certain things. For example, on the influence of each node. And if you're a donor with no patient, you still have limited influence as long as you're being matched in, in small structures. Um, so yeah, you can you can have these special nodes that are I, I didn't necessarily show them, but you can have these special nodes that are just donor nodes. Mm -hmm. and so why are donor and the patients pair? Does that mean like I, I need a kidney and my friend John will say like yeah hey, yeah. So basically, you had someone who was willing to give you a kidney, but they couldn't. Okay. So rather than waiting for a deceased donor list, okay. you take your friend and you're like maybe my friend can help someone else. Someone can help me. And then you, you have the reason that you have these donors that exist without patients is that sometimes, I mean, there, there are many different cases, but sometimes you have donor and patients that came to the mechanism together and a patient got a kidney through a different mechanism and the donor is still being altruistic. And sometimes you can think of it as a, that the deceased donor that was added in the, in the network as well. So there are many different ways that you can come in not having a patient as well. The, the some lower bound for, for uh, mechanism in the worst case model. Yeah, for the strategy proofness no, or. Do you have uh, lower bound for IR? Um, for the worst, the, for the random graph. Uh, no, 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 not random graph. It's, 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 oh, worst case, you have to lose a constant fraction. For example, what I showed you the um, the, the example with so, so three cycle and a two cycle. So, so is that factor of two pretty much? So. Uh, you're using a factor of one, so instead of getting three matches, you're getting two matches. Right. So you're kind of using like one over three. Um, I see. And you know, doing a maximum matching, you can get like half of the. Yeah. So so yeah yeah so it would be like two third approximation. I think you can up up to two third approximation you can get. You so can. that would be better than a half, I think. <coughs> um, but the the main problem is that you're still losing a constant fraction. Um, what assumptions are you making, if any, about the number of um, arbitrary donors, donors, altruistic donors that are available? Uh, it's okay. They can be as many as uh, the like. You, you can have as many donors as you want. What happens is that size of opt can change when you have more altruistic donors. But our guarantees are always in terms of opt. So we are sort of blind as to what portion of them have their patients and what portion don't have their patients. Let's thank the speaker again.